Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn about international relations. Today's topic is wars and efficiency puzzle. And this is actually the very first part of the second chapter of my new book, The Rationality of War. The second chapter, of course, is available for free as a PDF on my website. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go to the video description and click on a link there, and that will take you to my website where you can download the free PDF. The video description also contains links to Amazon and Barnes & Noble if you wish to buy the full thing. But that's shameless self-promotion aside, we can get to the big question for today, which is, can war be mutually beneficial? And to illustrate this question, I want to look at a hypothetical example between Venezuela and Colombia. So imagine that Venezuela discovers an oil deposit worth $80 billion. Obviously, Venezuela is going to be very excited because that's a lot of money. But then Colombia hears about this and declares that the oil deposit is actually on its side of the border, and so the oil actually belongs to Colombia. Venezuela is having none of this, and we have a, a crisis brewing here where the sides are now crawling in their militaries and preparing for war. Now think about this from each side's perspective, starting with Venezuela. Venezuela believes that it's going to win the war 60% of the time and the $80 billion in oil with it. However, when you have a war going on, you have costs. You have costs of dead people that you have to compensate their families for. You have costs of buildings being destroyed. And there might also be some oil that's, that's destroyed over the course of the fighting on the land that where the oil is being controlled. So when Venezuela thinks about all these costs, it estimates those costs to be worth $15 billion, and it's going to have to pay those regardless of whether it wins or loses the war. Now, switching sides, thinking about this from Colombia's perspective, Colombia agrees that Venezuela will win 60% of the time, which means Colombia is only going to win 40% of the time. Colombia also has to worry about these death, destruction, and lost oil costs, and Colombia estimates them to be at $12 billion. So for the interactive part of this video, here's a question for you. Is war inevitable between these two countries? You might want to review the last two slides, these two slides right here, and think about that for a moment. And once you have come up with an answer, please post that into the comment section on YouTube, and we will move forward once you've done that. Okay, so if you've seen uh, the video a couple of times ago when we talked about the courtroom, the courtroom provides a nice analogy to here, so you should already know the answer to this question that war should not actually be inevitable between these two countries. So let's see why that's the case. Think about Venezuela's needs. Venezuela is expected to pay off for wars $80 billion times the 60% probability that they win minus $12 billion, which comes out to $36 billion. And so Venezuela is going to need to receive $36 billion in a settlement in order to be satisfied and, and not want to fight a war. Now, from Colombia's side, Colombia expects to win 40% of the time, so it gets the $80 billion 40% of the time, but has to pay $15 billion in costs, which comes out to $17 million. So Colombia must receive $17 billion to be satisfied. Now, if you think about this, you might initially believe we have a rationalist explanation for war. And in fact, political science thought about this for a long time and agreed with this, that both countries have positive expected payoffs for fighting. And so that makes war rational for both parties. And that's why we have wars is because everyone has a positive expected utility for fighting. And well, because we've already spoiled the, the case with the courtroom, we know that this is actually not the case. This is false because bargaining is actually going to work out better for everyone here. War is not going to be rational. And here's why. Venezuela's and Colombia's demands sum to a total of $53 billion, but there's $80 billion in oil revenue to go around, so we have $27 billion missing. Well, where did that $27 billion go? The answer is that it went into the costs of war. Remember, if we sum up the costs of war here, we had $15 billion from one side, $12 billion on the other side. That sums up to $27 billion. The costs of war make $27 billion just disappear. So let's think about a better resolution. Let X be Venezuela's share of the settlement. Then X satisfies Venezuela if X is greater than $36 billion. So as long as Venezuela is receiving more than $36 billion, it strictly prefers peace to war. And that X is also going to satisfy Colombia if 80 minus X, so $80 billion is the total amount of oil revenue, and X is the share that Venezuela gets, so Colombia is getting whatever is left over, which is 80 minus X, if that's greater than $17 billion, then Colombia is satisfied. So in other words, if X is less than $53 billion, then Colombia is satisfied. So if Venezuela gets no more than $53 billion and Colombia is getting the rest, then Colombia is happy with that resolution and wouldn't want to go to war. And so an X is mutually satisfactory if it's between 36 and $53 billion. Now, there's a couple of obvious things here to note. First is that such a settlement exists 
There has to be a settlement between $36 billion and $53 billion that is mutually preferable to war, and that's just because there are some numbers in between 36 and $53 billion. So, for example, if the sides just split the oil evenly, if one side got $40 billion and the other side got $40 billion, that's mutually better than going to war. So such settlements exist, and the implication here is that bargaining is mutually preferable to war. So we have no rationalist explanation for war here. Peace should prevail in theory. So this leads to wars and efficiency puzzle, which is the subject of this video. Wars and efficiency puzzle is just a research question that asks, why do states sometimes choose to resolve their differences when, with inefficient fighting when bargaining, in theory, leaves both sides better off? So in this example, we saw a peaceful resolution, but we know that in practice, states sometimes fight. So we want to be able to resolve this discrepancy between our theory and what actually happens in real life. Now, one possible reason that you might think that we have this discrepancy is that there might have just been some quirk with the payoffs that we use for Venezuela and Colombia, something to do with the amount of oil or the probability of victory or the side's cost. Maybe there was some mathematical quirk to the specific example that we gave here. And what we're going to be doing in the next three videos is actually showing that this is no quirk and this is actually a trend. And the way we're going to do that is by looking at three separate results of this model, this, this bargaining model of war. We're going to start out by looking at an algebraic model, which is basically what we've been doing in this video, except we're going to generalize the, the subject. So instead of having a specific probability like Venezuela wins 60% of the time, Venezuela is going to win the war with probability P. And rather than having specific numerical costs for each side, we're just going to call them C. And we're going to see that the same result holds when we use these general terms. Now, this algebraic model doesn't do very much for our understanding. There is no intuitive understanding of what's going on. We're just using algebra. So what we're going to do in the video after that is we're going to look at a geometric model, which basically takes the algebra and paints a really nice picture of the bargaining situation. And when you see that geometric model, when you look at that video, which you'll be seeing in a couple of videos from now, it will change your perspective on war entirely. I guarantee it. It's a really, really interesting model. And then the last thing we're going to do is turn all of this into a game theoretic model. The reason for it is that, as this has, has previewed, is that we're not going to get a war result here, and we need to get that war result somehow because we've got to resolve this war as an efficiency puzzle, right? And the way we're going to do that is by introducing more assumptions into the model. But when you introduce more and more assumptions, you get more and more complex logic, and the best way of dealing with that is by using the game theoretic uh, traditions and, and rules that we've developed in game theory for a long time to make sure that those assumptions are actually being followed properly and our conclusions are valid and based off of those assumptions. And the game theoretic model will help us out with that. So that is it for this video. And in the next video, if you join me next time, we will see the algebraic model of the bargaining model of war. So I hope you join me then. Thanks.